I feel like this is your spiritual advice. This is what it feels like to me. We have the emperor. And I'm reminded of that uh, quote from Spider-Man, you know, with greater um, powers come great responsibilities, right? And this is your energy, the, the energy that you embody. This is somebody who's sort of like consider the pillar of strength and stability. And a lot of people come to them for advice. A lot of them come to them when they're in a jam, when they're in a pickle. So I feel almost like you wield a lot of power to persuade someone on a specific course of action. You wield a lot of power when it comes to dictating um, whether or not you can sabotage someone or whether or not you can uplift someone. And, you know, you try to do the right thing. But once again, I don't read these cards in the reverse position. So it's almost like aiming to do the right thing, aiming to not only, you know, succumb to temptation, but do the right thing by the other person. And with this energy, there is a, a, um, a danger of wielding so much power to affect other people's lives that we can be kind of, um, it, it gets to our head. And it can affect the way that we look at things realistically. And I also feel like for many of you, if you are in this position of power, of dominance, you might have a lot of people that are admiring you, that are interested in you, and they admire you because of the power that you wield. However, if you strip away the veneer and the power and the status and the prestige and the authority that you wield in a specific um, context, would they still be around? Would they still look at you with those, you know, lovey-dovey eyes? Would they still want to be with you? And that's something you really want to consider because I feel like there is a thirst for power. There is also a, um, a potential to abuse the power that is given to you, okay? Um, the energy that you come to the table with, and this is what you're bringing in, in this week in your love and romance sector, we have here the Eight of Pentacles. This is a card about, you know, I want to be left alone, okay? I want to take care of all the things that are in front of me. I want to do things in methodical manner, one by one by one by one. And I just want to, you know, have my little space, not talk to anyone, not deal with other people's BS and their drama. I want to focus on me. And this is a very earthy energy. I feel like you have been kind of tired of a situation circling around you. You have been kind of tired of people meddling in your business or like being uh, overly taxed, like physically, emotionally, mentally. You just want to take care of things. You just want to keep your head down, nose to the grindstone and get through the day. Okay. And as a result of it, I feel like the, the, uh, whatever you're doing, life, work, uh, family, whatever circumstances that you're dealing with, it feels almost as if you're constantly um, working for other people, doing things for other people, taking care of other people. And you're doing it in a very like, um, it's expected of me, so I have to do it. So there's very little room for creativity. There's very little room for fun and enjoyment. There's very little time even out of your busy schedule for you to have alone time for you to be, you know, to, to do things that you enjoy and to do things that you love and to find your own personal enjoyment in life, in the work that you do with family, with other areas of your life. So I feel like the energy is a little bit dry, is very brittle. And spiritually, if we live like this, we can become quite bitter and, you know, reclusive and also withdrawn. And we can also feel like life is not really worth living, right? This is a good card that indicates, you know, financial stability, but in a love reading, it can feel like a lot of work, a lot of repetition, a lot of predictability. And I feel like because of all these predictable, because of all these monotonous actions, and you're just going through the motions, you almost feel like, what is there to life? Like, is there more? Was I misled? Did people, you know, as a child, I was told that it, it was going to be this uh, grand, um, major grand, um, uh, culmination. Like once I get a job, once I'm out on my own, once I fall in love, once I have a family, it was supposed to be, you know, 
uh, a culmination. Everything was supposed to build and increase and enhance my happiness. But where is that total satisfaction? When will I stop having to work and feel that sense of total satisfaction in all areas of my life? So I feel like you're at this point. I feel like a midlife crisis for some of you, quarter life crisis for others who are younger and watching this. And I feel like you're in a relationship where it just feels a little bit dry and monotonous. And because of that, you're looking for an escape or you're looking for, you know, a fantasy. You're looking for like, who is the person that lied to me and said that life was going to be like this when I had, you know, this idealized vision in my head that it was going to be grand and amazing. And so you're looking for an escape, okay? The partner, the relationship partner, love interest that you're dealing with here, I have here an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini or a Libra, and this is clearly an air sign. When it shows up as a queen or a king, I feel like not only do they embody that energy, but they are that energy. So this is an Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is somebody that... Um, it's misleading the way that they are, okay? They're quite beautiful, and I love the way they're, um, this person is depicted in this card. This is somebody that is looking for love, okay? They might not be warm and cuddly and with that blue background. They're a little bit icy. They're very intelligent. Uh, the butterfly on the, uh, on the head chakra, it's somebody that is very communicative. And, uh, you know, they don't talk about, like... Uh, I love you, I want to be with you, and, you know, let's uh, share a life together. They don't make these grandiose gestures when it comes to love, when it comes to emotional expression, when it comes to, you know, soothing the other person, but they are out looking for love, and I feel like they've been, um, they've been punctured too many times, they've been hurt too many times in their past, and as a result of it, they're very, very closed off and they're very careful. This is also somebody that recently got out of a relationship or somebody that is still healing. They have a lot of healing either through childhood or through past relationships. But I feel like they're looking for love and they see potential in you. And I feel like you find this person incredibly, incredibly, incredibly attractive. But I feel like the way you express love and the way they express love, there is definitely a mismatch here and it's making things really difficult to um, resolve and it's making things, it's it's almost like interfering with the time frame in which the two of you can come together. This person is feeling a lot of heartache regarding you, okay? We have here the Three of Swords. This is linked in with their energy, the air energy. They have a lot of... Um, mental anguish regarding you they might be a third party they might feel like they're interfering in your life and they might withdraw okay so the sword energies they're in control of the swords they can withdraw at any time this is also somebody that is bringing you a lot of pain and a lot of heartache and i feel almost like I feel like on the surface, they look very, very perfect, but underneath, they are dealing with a lot of internal wounds, and it seems almost like there is expectations here about, you know, if you're in a relationship with me, you're supposed to be better than all my exes, you're supposed to be this person that completes me, and then you're supposed to restore my faith in humanity. You know, some people expect so much from their relationship partner to, to not only be the, the lover, but also the mother and the father and the child and the friend and, you know, the counselor. So there are m mismatches in expectations between two people. And I feel like because they've been so hurt, they kind of put you on a pedestal and they expect you to do all this internal work to help them heal. Okay. And I feel like it can feel like a very heavy experience. It can also feel like wait a minute, I didn't sign up for this, or you start to see that maybe they're not perfect on the inside. Maybe, you know, I was misled. So there's a lot of things here about feeling like you were misled or feeling like somebody, you know, painted a, a rosy picture. But the reality is the situation is far from rosy. And I see some of you kind of beating yourself up over it too. Like it's supposed to be lighthearted and fun and airy and, and, you know, um, 
And it's gotten so dramatic and it's gotten so difficult and it's gotten so entangled. Um, and, you know, I didn't sign up for this. It, it's like feeling duped, feeling misled and feeling like, you know, it, it's, it's like that, that veneer of the fantasy fading away. Okay. The fog is lifting and you're seeing the situation clearly and you're just like, oh no, what did I get myself into? Okay. And your energy as well. And these are your spiritual advice cards. We have here the three of cups as well as the emperor and the emperor your energy you're looking at the three of cups the three of cups is dating it is third party involved in a relationship three of swords three of cups so what do you do you're caught between a rock and a hard place okay you're caught between two very very uh, disparate energies and ideas okay on the one hand I don't want to get involved with this person anymore. Do I hurt them and, you know, tell them to take a hike? Or do I involve them in my web of an existing relationship and make them a third party? So what do you do? And I feel like, you know, you, you don't want to hurt them. You do like this person and you know they've been hurt before. You know they're all icy and steely because they've been hurt one too many times. Somebody has really punctured them too many times. And because of that, they're very closed off. But when they love, they love wholeheartedly. And I feel like a big part of you know that. There might be an age difference here. And I feel like with the emperor, there's usually an age difference. The emperor, the hermit, um, where one person sort of like um, sees the other as a maternal, paternal figure. And then the other person kind of patronizes the younger person, you know, like there's this patronage, there's this um, paternal pride, maternal pride. And I feel like it's feeding into some, some, some deep rooted issues in the other person. It's like wanting approval from the mother, wanting approval from the father. And I feel like because there's an age difference, there's that expectation that, oh, you're going to take care of me. You're going to, you know, make sure I'm okay. And you're going to, you know, do the right thing. And so it can boost your sense of pride to be, ha to be given those responsibilities right it can boost enhance your sense of pride but at the same time it's sort of like they're they're having unrealistic expectations of you and I feel like you need to be really clear about that and you need to be very clear about your intentions moving forward you don't want to hurt this person so what you're planning to do is to incorporate them into a love relationship with you when there might already be someone else that you're dealing with in the picture I also feel like you're afraid as a result of separating from them. If I were to separate from them with the three of swords, they're going to quickly bounce back and date somebody else. So there's a lot of fears here. So you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Where do you turn? What do you do? Do you do the right thing and just, you know, hurt them temporarily, but in the long run it's going to be good for them? Or do you take on the responsibilities and, you know, the responsibilities to, to heal them and to take care of them and to, you know, do all these things that are expected of you. So I, I definitely feel like you're veering towards this direction here with Three of Cups. This is um, taking up the mantle, loving this person, incorporating them into your, your romantic sector and uh, hoping for the best. Okay. Um, for others who are not dealing with this as a third party type of a situation, I feel like someone is really, really hurt over something that happened between the, the two of you in the, um, few, in the present. And I feel like things will be aired out. Okay. So I'm getting a lot of air energy and I feel like it's going to be aired out because with this queen, she's very communicative. She's not like, um, the king of swords where she's critical. This one, I feel like she's ready to talk. She's ready to, to, to express her opinion. She's ready to express more of herself. And I feel like, you know, the natural route for you is if somebody comes to you and they're very sincere and they don't have like hidden agendas or they don't have strings attached, you're generally very, very open. And I feel like you're kind of like the fixer of the Zodiac. You want to make their problems go away. You want to embrace them. You want to hug them. You want to, you know, soothe away their worries and, and you're going to tell them everything will be okay. And I feel like 
it's somebody that you're very much, you know, emotionally invested in. And there might have been some recent separation, harsh words exchanged between you and them. And as a result of it, it's making it very difficult for you to um, have a clean start uh, with somebody new, like you care about them. And I, I also feel for others of you, you're jumping into dating after having separated yourself from this air sign. So once again, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, I also see the Aries energy, and you have a lot of repeat cards from, from Aries as well. So you've recently uh, moved away from possibly uh, an air sign, and now you're moving towards either an Aries or just more dating on your end, okay? Um, I pulled out two cards for the Three of Swords, just to clarify. And what we have here is the Eight of Cups, walking away from a situation that has been very, very um, tenuous. It's like invest you've invested a lot of time in, possibly eight months, possibly eight years in a situation. You've built up a lot of hopes. You put in a lot of work, a lot of energy, and a lot of resources. And you're not really feeling that abundant, okay? Okay. And for some of you, this could be a love relationship partner. The Empress and the Emperor, it's a match. And with the Three of Swords, you might be moving away from this person because of third party interfering in your relationship. So this air sign might be their third party, not yours. Or this air sign can be a third party from your end, not your relationship partner. So I hope that makes sense. But your spiritual advice as the Emperor is, you know, doing the right thing, elevating yourself to the 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 space where you can look at a situation holistically and, you know, see all the actors that are involved and, and, and figure out, like, if I take a specific course of action, who is, am I going to help in the process? Who am I going to hurt in the process? And weigh out your pros and cons from that space of enlightenment rather than from the carnal, from the physical, from from the, the more, you know, physical, sexual, like, space of desire you want to elevate your energy a little bit here as the empress and think about you know who am i hurting along the way and what am i really doing what is my end goal and what am i going to be able to achieve at the very end of it okay there is fun and dating and flirtation and things like that that's going to be coming into the picture offers to go out for for dates for those of you who are single i feel like you're newly separated from somebody and you might be burying yourself on the work front to kind of sort things out, to make things happen for yourself professionally. And I feel like if you've been doing that, the opportunity for you to break away from that and to move forward with dating and socializing and just having a good time, that's coming in as well. Kind of like a, a little bit of a reprieve from just work, work, work. Okay. Um, other areas of your life here, I have the star, which indicates to me a lot of healing that's coming into the picture. And I also have the king of pentacles. This is your energy where things are really looking up for you. So we have the star, major arcana card, uh, which is wish fulfillment. We have the, the king of pentacles, financial abundance that's flowing in for you and the wheel of fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune are um, major, a series of major, major big events that are bringing you to kind of like your, your destiny or your path. So if you've been questioning, you know, like that, if you've been questioning at the very beginning, uh, is there more to life? Yes, there's going to be more. And I feel like whatever you have um, put in a lot of hard work to, to do, healing other people, teaching other people, mentoring other people, advising other people, counseling other people, because this is somebody that dishes out advice, okay? So I feel like if you've been training, teaching, mentoring, counseling, advising, all of those words are coming up, and I feel like you're going to see your results. You're going to see, oh, wow, I never thought that, you know, they would take my advice to heart, or I never thought I would have such major breakthrough, but you're going to see the result the, the physical results of your hard work and effort in the real world. You're going to start to see all those people that you advise, all those people that you mentor, how their lives have changed because of you. So I see like a lot of little thank you notes and, you know, um, gestures of appreciations and things like that coming in. And I feel like it might not even be this week, but it's the beginning. It's like the, the wheels are turning in order for this process to start, in order for this process to move along. I feel for others of you too, pay increases 
um, getting signed on for like new contracts. Okay. Like, are you, if you're working on a contract basis, you might be made permanent and you might even have to sign, you know, I'm like a retainer. Like I'm going to stay here for another year and you have my word, like things like that contracts being signed. And I also feel as well, um, if you're taking care of little ones, either tutoring them, mentoring them, there's an element here about, you know, their parents finding out about their grades improving and they're making recommendations for you so that you can get more clients, more customers. Okay. So that element is really, really positive for others of you. What I have here is the Empress. This is taking control of your life feeling elated controlling your territory and i also feel like claiming your territory so that no one else is encroaching upon your space okay so this element about you know kind of putting your foot down and and telling your partner and dictating to them like this is where i stand and dictating to the people around you these are my boundaries and you don't cross it like um this is when taurus gets mad and you know they're like laying down the law of the land so that people don't overstep their boundaries, don't wear out their welcome when they're around you, and don't um, encroach upon things that belong to you or try to steal things that are yours from right under your nose, okay? So I feel like this is you, like, uh, you might have gotten mad last week over something and now you're just like putting your foot down and this is a good energy for you to bring to the table because people feel like they can push you they can people often feels like like you're a doormat because it takes a lot for you to get angry but when you are angry uh, the wrath can be felt um, it's it's very severe and so I feel like something might have um, created this process, you know, like to, to move things along. And so this is you doing that. And I also feel like if you have been dealing with in-laws, you know, in your situation, meddling in your parenting style, I feel like some of the in-laws are going to be traveling away and you're going to be quite happy. And then if you're dealing with issues when it comes to parenting, people telling you how to be a good parent, or people telling you, you should do this, you should do that for your kids, what you're doing is wrong. I feel like you're going to be taking up the mantle and putting your foot down and just telling people as well, um, this is how I'm going to do it. You know, I don't need your unsolicited advice and input. So I feel like this is you kind of setting the record straight for another person, for a group of people and kind of uh, making, making yourself known, making yourself heard. I'm hearing this roar. So it's like, if you've been silent, about things. This is the week where you're going to let yourself be heard. Okay. Um, I mentioned before, you know, setting the record straight. Um, it's important to have these conversations with people. If you feel like things have been muddled and confusing, I feel like they don't have to be that way. You kind of have to occasionally look up from your desk and look up from the, the things that you're doing that are in front of you and look at what the other person is trying to tell you. Because I feel like things are getting lost in translations. Uh, messages are not conveyed the correct way because there is this mutual energy of intimidation between you and another person. If you've had a really difficult time communicating with them, I feel like there can be very strong healing and breakthroughs between you and the other person. Granted that both people are able to be open and vulnerable with each other. So that's an opportunity coming through that you can kind of take up and allow to, um, to, to allow that channel of communication to open up.